I really believe this is going to be a life-changing message for us. Your life is going to change. And years ago, my life changed in one moment. I still remember the night where my prayers went from just prayers of the heart, which are short and simple, because if you pray long and confusing, you're never going to pray unceasing. You know what Billy Graham says, whoever prays long over their food has sin in their life. And so that's why I just say amen. And, and so over the food. But today, I want to show you how to distinguish your life. Prayers from the heart are number one, short and simple. Number two, they're unceasing. And I love what uh, the saint said, St. Francis of DeSalle, that we bring, it's the sacrament of the present moment. We bring God, we're aware of God in every moment of our lives. Then in that moment, we offer that moment to him, whether it's a little league game, whether it's uh, potty training your toddler, we offer that moment to God and it becomes a sacrifice. So when we are aware of God, it is a sacrament. When we offer, it is a Sac uh, sacrifice and when we accept the answer it becomes a surrendered life and then we spoke on how to pray unceasing and how to pray about everything but today my life was changed and I think those three methods of prayer are needful and useful but I want to begin to show you how to have a distinguished life and what is it right now if your name and my name our name is recognized on the earth will it be remembered in heaven I want to be distinguished with my life and so today I want to dedicate this uh, message, this sermon, if you will, uh, to four people in our church, because it's one thing to be a person of prayer. It's another thing to enter into uh, the highest form of prayer, which is the prayer of intercession. And I want to thank, number one, Pastor Florence. She models praying for others. <clears throat> And she's distinguished. People not only know of her, but heaven uh, knows of her. Also, three others is Pastor Mike Rovner. Truly, I've never met a businessman that also prays for others. And he's distinguished not only on earth, but in heaven. Also, I would like to honor one of the greatest intercessors that I know. And truly, his prayers, and I'll tell you about this, have saved myself, Becky, and I. And that's David Ethel. So I've never met a man so successful that has given his life for praying for others. And one last is Keith Hudson, who gave himself for intercession and even wrote a book in the 80s and the 90s called The Cry. And I believe God is going to distinguish us. Now get this. What if I told you there's a type of prayer that would distinguish your life where you are established beyond a doubt, above and beyond, and that your life will become otherworldly. There is a way that you can live a distinguished life. I really believe that. And you say, what is that? It is prayer for others. Now, many people, they have sympathy on what's happening in our world, and that is human-born, and we need to have more sympathy for others. But today, what I'm speaking about in intercession, you will begin to receive a compassion. And a compassion comes only from God. It's God almost putting a little eyedropper of a burden that he has in our heart because if we had all his burden, I don't think we could bear it. But when we all come into the place of praying for others, our world will become a better place. Can you say amen? And I think we need to begin to ask ourselves this question. How does God and the saints pray? And can I tell you, God prays for others. And I want you to write this question down. When is the last time that you and I spent 10 minutes praying for another person? Not praying just for a parking spot, not praying for a purse, not just doing short and simple, unceasing or asking about everything. If our prayers stop there, then we will never know the joy of connecting with God in such a way that your life and my life becomes supernatural. If you have your Bibles, I want you to do this. I want you to go to Romans chapter 8. And again, we're going to be distinguished beyond a doubt. Our lives can be above and beyond and really otherworldly. And so we want to begin to read Romans 8, 26, and then we'll read verse 31. Here it goes. It says, likewise... 
the Spirit also helps us in our weakness. Why? For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. There are oftentimes, many times, I don't even know how to pray in a situation. Then he goes on, but the Spirit himself, get this, makes intercession. I want you to underline that word, makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, he who searches, this is verse 27, he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because, get this, he makes intercession for us, the saints, how? According to the will of God. God. Now go down to verse 31. I want to begin to read that with this. We'll start there. It says this, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? No, God is not against you. No matter what you've done, he is for you. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Is it God who justifies? Who is he who condemns? Is it Christ who died and furthermore is also re- risen? Now get this, who is even at the right hand of God? Get this who also, get this word, makes intercession for us. And then so nothing can separate us from God. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is praying for you. Jesus is praying for you. And it's something about that. I want to begin to tell you how my life shifted. And then you do have your Bibles. I want you to go to Acts 10. But I want to tell you, I, I remember this night I had really begun to master really prayers of the heart. I was going through my first Bible, which I got when I was 20 years old. It's now 42 years old. Just last night, uh, reading some of the notes in it that I had written, and it really was a prayer journal. And it was in my 20s, really, that I learned how to pray short and simple, how to pray unceasing, how to pray for everything. And while the journal, the Bible, was filled with miracle answers, it really shocked me. But it was a night that Jude, we just took him home, and it was in the middle of the night, and people say, I slept like a baby. I always say, you never had a baby because they don't sleep. And so Becky said, well, you go get Jude. So I retrieved him, and I really couldn't go back to sleep. So I went, and I was reading a book, and I can't believe you're here today, by your grandmother. Joy Dawson had written a book on being an intercessor. And the book said this, how to become and remain an intercessor. It was as if it was yesterday. I was sitting on the washing machine in the dryer in our small, small laundry room of our first home. And she quoted a scripture, 1 Samuel 12, 23. You're not turning there. I'm just going to quote it. It says, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you. It says, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord that I should pray, I mean, uh, that I shouldn't pray for you. And the Spirit of God impressed on my mind, he said, you you pray about so many things, and your life is blessed. You pray for your wife, you now pray for your son, your ministry, it's growing. He said, son, I do not want you to sin with the sin of prayerlessness. I want you to begin to pray for others. And Joy Dawson, who recommended another book, and it's on intercession by Andrew Murray, and he quoted these two scriptures, and that night they burned and etched in my mind, and I would never be the same. I want to read this to you. One is Isaiah 63, 5. This is God speaking. I looked, but there was no one to help. I wondered, I was astonished that there was no one to uphold. Therefore, my own arm brought salvation for me, and in my own fury, it sustained me. Then he says this in Isaiah 59, 16. He saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. So his own arm brought deliverance and that night my life would change I would begin to pray for others and in that it started simply praying for high schools and young people I'll never forget we moved to Bellevue and we only had five kids in our youth ministry and by this time stepping into the ministry of praying for others which I am telling you it will make you so distinguished not only on the earth but in heaven and what is it if you're recognized on earth for success money affluence you're famous you're a singer you're an entertainer you're an influencer what is it if we're recognized here but we're not known or recognized or 
are remembered in heaven. And, and so it was Sammamish High School. And for one year, we didn't have one student from Sammamish High School. No one ever knew what the skinny, weird youth pastor was doing every Monday and sometimes five times a week. I thought if the children of Israel could walk around the walls of Jericho seven times and been on the seventh day and the seventh time and they drop somehow, if I would intercede, stand in the gap, that's what it means, that we're standing between God and people, that we're standing between Satan and earth, that we're standing, please get this, a light and darkness, violence and peace. There's got to be an intermediary that prayers go beyond short and simple, that go beyond praying about everything and that go beyond pray, prayer that never stops. It is a prayer that prays for others. And I would go, as I would walk around, I saw where the stoners would sit. They were doing drug deal. So one day I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to step the intercession up to another level. I brought communion out there. And I thought, pour some of the blood on the rock. And then I had some anointing oil. I kid you not, a week later, they couldn't meet there anymore. Long story short, in one year, 17 of those neo-Nazi black trench coat mafia stoners came to our youth camp and they got born again. It's praying for others. That is really satisfying. Are you with me? And so my life would begin to change. I want you to read with me. We're going to go to Acts chapter 10. And I want you to look at this. It says a certain man named Cornelius. So I want to begin to look at this man who changed the world forever. Why? Because he became an intercessor and he lived as one. Let's read Acts 10. We're going to go eight verses. So here we go. There was a certain man. If you look that up, you know what it means? Distinguished beyond a doubt. Do you know what a certain man means in the Greek? It also means that you're above and you're beyond. You know what it also means? Hey, 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 there were many soldiers throughout history. Think of the soldiers of Alexander the Great, the Caesars. Think of the soldiers of Pharaoh's army. Think of even King David's soldiers. And they list those mighty men. Our grandson is named. They go, where did you get Abishai? Well, from the Bible. Thank you very much. And it, he was one of David's mighty men. Now, get this. There are many centurions, but... Not one's names mentioned in the New Testament. They had a centurion who helped build the temple. Remember, and he said, my servant is sick. Jesus said, I'll come to your house. He said, I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. Just speak the word. There was a centurion at the cross of Christ. And when Jesus said, Father, forgive them. My God, my God, where, why have you forsaken me? And he breathed his last breath. That centurion said, this was truly the son of God. There's only one of those soldiers that name is mentioned and his his name is Cornelius, and could it be that he prayed beyond unceasing, beyond short and simple, and beyond praying about everything, and he started praying for others. God saw it, and when God memorializes your name, your name will not be forgotten. Are you with me on that? So let's continue to read. Okay, here it goes. I'll try not to preach it during the reading. I'll preach it after the reading. This, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment. Get these words, a devout man, one who feared God with all his household. Get this, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always there you go unceasing prayer about the ninth hour of the day he saw clearly in a vision the angel of God coming in and saying to him I just want to stop right there anytime in the Bible when men start interceding and go beyond praying about everything short and simple and unceasing you're going to see supernatural, angelic uh, visitation and activity. It happened with Moses, happened with Daniel, happened with Elijah. It happens with us. Now get this, the angel called him by name, Cornelius. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? So he said to him, your prayers, please get this. Now, your prayers, what type of prayers will really move the heart of God? And I'm telling you, it's prayers for others because that's the exact prayers that Jesus 
Jesus and the Holy Spirit are praying now. He says, your prayers and your arm, alms giving to the poor have come up to God for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa and send uh, for Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. He will tell you what you must do. And when the angel who spoke to him departed, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier from among those who waited on him continually. So when he had explained all these things to them he sent them to Joppa I want to begin to say again how can our lives be distinguished number one is stepping in to the ministry of intercession which is simply praying for others and intercession is when our hearts are guided or energized by the person of the Holy Spirit and write this down we receive a burden from the Lord and I just want you to know true prayer for others begins with a burden. That's how my youth ministry really started and was sustained. People said, how is it you still speak to young people and you're a grandparent? It started with a burden. And when you begin to pray, when God puts on your heart for others, it will be a supernatural reality. And I want you to begin to think about this. How can we pray and ask God for nations when maybe we haven't even prayed for a next door neighbor or our neighborhood or the city we live in or our family. I want someone here to hear me. There's someone, a parent, you have a son or a daughter that is away from God. You know one of the most powerful saints in the Catholic Church that is celebrated is Saint Monica. And Saint Monica is remembered because it was her intercession for her son, Augustine, that drew him to Christ and he would become the Bishop of Hippo. I have a word for someone here today. You will never outrun the prayers of your mother because God God celebrates the prayers of mothers for sons and daughters. Go ahead, run, run, run. Make your bed in hell if you want to. Go to the highest mountain if you want to. You will not escape that prayer. And you know, some prayers die. You prayed about the parking spot, that's already dead. You prayed about the purse, you probably already gave it away. There are some prayers that never die. And even when we step into eternity, it is those prayers that will outlive us. And that is the prayers for others. Can you say amen? And it begins with a burden. In a popular activity today, people will create a dream board. And I think we should create a dream board where we begin to write out our life and maybe we become recognized on earth and we begin to actualize, if you will, the things that we desire. Can I say intercession? We, it goes above and beyond a dream board. It is where God begins to give us a part of his compassion for the world. This is my opinion. I believe every problem in the world today, there is an answer in the heart of God. And maybe one of the reasons we have not seen the problem solved in our nation and world is maybe we pray short and simple. Maybe we pray about everything. Maybe we pray unceasingly. But I believe today God wants an army of people who pray for other people. Can I say there, I can't go to Asia without crime. Why? Because I have prayed for Asia. Yes, even today, yes, this morning I saw on Facebook, Japan, Tokyo is preparing for a tsunami. Well, I've been in Tokyo five times. And you say, what happened? I can't just read that on Facebook anymore. Why? Because I became an intercessor, not by condemnation, but out of conviction when I heard your grandmother, Joy Dawson, said you can live the most thrilling life as you begin to pray for other people. I didn't want an ordinary life. I didn't just want to be a pastor. I didn't want to be an average guy. I wanted to influence the world and my generation with Christ for the sake of heaven. And that's what intercessors do. They bring Kevin to God's earth and his people. And personally, this is just my take. I think in the church today, there's too much judgment. We exist here, City Church, California, for anyone to believe. And when we say anyone, we mean anyone. And you say, well, what if some of those people come? I hope and pray those people do come. 
And you know what will get rid of judgment? Instead of criticizing them, why don't you give 10 minutes to the group in our nation that you think is destroying our nation and begin to pray for them? And why don't you pray what Jesus is praying? No condemnation. Nothing will separate them from the love of God. Father, begin to draw them. Lord, use me in this community, oh God, that I can reach them. One day I heard a believer, everyone say a burden, burden. shout it out. Burden. A burden is something, it's an act of compassion where it, uh, look, your emotions could get you to sign up to work city kids, but they will not get you to show up. Oh, that just preached. A burden will sustain you and lead you when no one is looking. I received a burden for the youth of my nation. And so another one, I, one day in prayer, God said, begin to pray for Buddhists because people in the church in Seattle said, can you believe the Buddhists? And I thought, well, they're a lot nicer than a lot of Christians. <laughs> Come on. And they go, you know, it's not a religion. It's just a philosophy. It's like, yeah, maybe we need to change our philosophy about them. So I got tired of the judgment. So in the place of prayer, true story, I started praying for Buddhists. And in the place of prayer, you will do crazy things. When you have a burden for a group of people, you'll begin to talk to them like they're in the room. So I begin to declare, I have an anointing for Buddhists. And one day in the church in Seattle, I got up and I said, you guys, I have an anointing for Buddhists. And so a woman came up to me. She was from Holland. I take that back, Denmark. She came, she goes, Pastor Jude. That's how she talked. She said, is it true that you have an anointing for Buddhists? And I thought, well, the spirit of the Lord is on me. He's anointed me. I think that's for Buddhists, Muslim, red, yellow, black, white, men, women, children, old people, young people. I have an anointing for everyone. I said, absolutely, I have an anointing for Buddhists. Kid you not. She said, there is uh, the wealthiest family who exports uh, fruits and vegetables from America to Taiwan is in a coma. And, and she is not responding. She has a feeding tube. She went with a group of Buddhists to China. And a demon spirit came on her. The Buddhist priest said he had no power to cast it out. And she has not responded. Will you go and pray? I would go to the University of Washington Hospital. Everyone say burden. burden. Say it again. Burden. You see, when you have a burden from the Lord that you get in a place of prayer called intercession. My world changed. Can I tell you, I'm not a uh, distinguished man because I got a parking spot. Those are fun prayers. But there is a life-transforming way to pray. It goes beyond your intelligence, beyond your gift matrix, beyond your financial uh, portfolio. It goes beyond how many people know your name and you begin to get recognition in heaven. And when God says, Cornelius, your prayers and your giving are now memorialized by God, that means God has it graffiti all over heaven about this man called Cornelius and I'm telling you right now when you and I pray for another it's the way God prays it's the highest form of prayer so I go into the hospital she's there she's not moving and I love the Buddhist family they, they call me priest Jude I've heard of Judas priest but I haven't heard of priest Jude I kid you not, they were very conciliatory. When I came in, they bowed. They go, thank you, priest Jude. And I said, gosh, I wish the church would do that. <laughs> I actually wanted to quote Napoleon Dynamite, grab my wrist, no, my other wrist, you know. <laughs> and so I had been praying for Buddhists. So I met Su Jang Wang before I met her. And I had been learning that. And from what your mother's, grandmother said from that moment, that night, to this present day, I became and I remain an intercessor. And it's marked my life. I kid you not. I bow down in a whisper because when you pray for others, you do not have to scream or get emotional in your prayers. If you always are emotional, it could be a sign that you're only experiencing human sympathy and not godly compassion. So I, I got down. I said, Su Jiang Wang. In the name of Jesus Christ, I take authority over this demonic spirit. You come out in Jesus' name. And I said, say right now, Jesus is Lord. 
I kid you not, she had not spoken or responded in six weeks. She goes, Jesus is Lord. And I thought, they must have not told me she talked. They are going crazy crying. I made her say Jesus is Lord 50 times. I was going to make sure. So I had a four spiritual laws book in Taiwanese. And I said, do you guys want this evil spirit that came on Su Jang Wang to come on you? I asked them, why didn't you call for the Buddhist priest? They said, we did. We wanted him instead of you, priest Jude. But he said he had no power over that evil spirit. I said, well, I don't either, but I know the one who has all power, and it is a name that is above every name. And can I tell you, if you want your prayers to be answered 100% of the time, you will find it when you're praying for others because God is not a God who is selfish, trying to always pray this. No, he's a God who lives to pray for other people. Can you say amen? Amen. Everyone say burden. burden. Then the next one is obedience. 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 And when it comes to being someone like Cornelius, you not only have a burden, it's the highest form of prayer, but you begin to obey. I want you to go back to Acts. I want you to look at 7 and 8. Go back to Acts 10. I want to read this. Acts 10, 7 and 8. Are you there? Let's read it. And when the angel who spoke to him had departed, Cornelius called two of his household servants, a devout soldier from among those who waited on him continually. So when he had explained all these things to them, he sent them to Joppa. I want you to know he quickly obeyed. And you say, well, I've never really felt a burden uh, in prayer from God. God, get this, trust his burdens with those who will obey his wishes. Are you with me? Let me say it another way. One of my favorite scriptures in, uh, about intercession. After an angel appeared to a virgin girl by the name of Mary, it says she pondered many things in her heart. I think one of the reasons many people pray but not intercede, because sometimes I think, they think, have you ever been in a prayer group? And they call it praying for others, but it's gossiping. Can I tell you about so-and-so? We need to pray for him. And it's a little prayer and a lot of talking. <laughs> Come on. And so where Cornelius, that, it wasn't that. He prayed always. He gave generously. But then it says this. He immediately sent the soldiers and a devout, two men uh, and a devout soldier. He obeyed. I would say this, God tells his secrets for those who keep them. Another way to say it, God shares his burdens with those who will carry them out. I would say I would never tell a secret of mine to someone who's not going to keep it or not going to be a part of the answer. I became a part of an answer. You pray, and this happened to my wife. She would pray uh, for young women who got pregnant and that their child would be given for adoption. My wife has helped place more people for adoption then and what's funny about Becky when God drops something on her heart I have to do the obeying do you get that when God puts something on my heart she goes hey that's your burden it's like dear Lord I really my youth ministry lasted long because I had a burden for the youth of America Becky had a burden for the malls of America that's a joke that's a joke kid you not she then had a burden in prayer true story she had a burden in prayer to begin to pray for couples who could not have a child. And she would introduce people that had is what is called snowflake babies that were frozen embryos that were adopted. She knows several people. This one, Then she moved to another burden. Do you see? God's given her a similar burden. First, it was uh, couples who could not, I mean, uh, young single women that were pregnant in adoption. The next was couples who could not have a child. They were infertile. Then the next, she moved to another level. And it's funny, she ropes me into this burden, praying for couples that are totally infertile. It's impossible possible for them to conceive. She has at least seven people who were in that position that now have children. You said, Pastor Jude, did it begin with your burden? No, it began with hers, but it's my obedience. She'll say, come pray for him. It's like, hey, it's your burden. You pray for him. She said, you have faith and you're married to me. Help me carry this burden now. Seven people
people have children because of her faith in Burton. And that is the truth. Okay, say a distinguished life. Okay, the band's going to come up. I'm inviting them up. When you move into the place of praying for others and you obey, you steward your life well. Because to become and remain an intercessor, the way we live is important. When you begin to hear, and I want you to think about this, no other soldier, no other soldier is named like this soldier. And this soldier, get this, his name is Cornelius, and God memorialized his life. Why? Because he lived his intercession. He had a burden, and he obeyed. I want to tell you a story uh, that happened to me. My life is not only affected by Andrew Murray. Get the book on intercession and Joy Dawson on intercession. Your life will never be the same and you will be distinguished and you will not only be recognized here, but you will be known in heaven. I want to begin to tell you about five years ago, we had moved to Ventura and Becky and I love one another, but truly we were struggling getting along. And we had become empty nesters. And if you'd say, where did you guys make a mistake? And I wanted you to speak to me. I think we put too much attention and focus in the kids. And when the boys left our home, we had an empty house and we looked at each other and we were aggravated with each other. And so a very, very successful businessman in the church, he deals with hundreds of millions of dollars one day, called and said, can we meet this week at Starbucks? And so we went, and he said it was a Starbucks by Victorian Telegraph, by the CBS. He says, I have been praying for you for over a year. And he helps people think about their financial future. He said, you know, it's something, Pastor Jude, when people get to be 50 or 60, and they haven't thought about their financial future. It's going to be hardship. He said, but what's interesting, sometimes in marriage, men do that. They don't think about becoming an empty nester. And I had really shared with hardly anyone that we had tension. I kid you not. It was one day right before COVID. He was on the phone with a multi-million dollar business deal. And God, you see, to become distinguished with God and praying for others, one of the reasons we don't, it doesn't make natural sense to our mind. And your mind could be incredibly intelligent. But 1 Corinthians says that the Spirit searches the deep things of the heart of God. And who knows the spirit of a man except the spirit that is in that man? And then it says that they're revealed to us, how? By the Spirit, but that the natural human being, it's foolishness to them. It doesn't make sense. And I think that's why we don't enter into this really infinite high realm of communicating with God, that we pick up a part of his burden for humanity. And so I kid you not, the man had an impression, go to the church, and I want you to pray for Pastor Jude and Becky. What is intercession? It's when your prayers and my prayers and our prayers, it shifts. That's all I can tell you. No longer is it short and simple. No longer is it unceasing in one sense. No longer is it praying about anything. No, it's praying about something very specific. And it's people, not things. Because if all I pray for is things, then my motives are going to get twisted. And he said that God put it on his heart. He came to this building right here. And it was on a Friday afternoon. He asked the people he was meeting with, can I call you on Monday? They agreed. He said, he prayed and God said, don't stop praying till I tell you to stop. Now, can I say that would be foolishness to most of us. He walked around this building praying for Becky and I for two and a half hours. And I kid you not, something began to change in our mind. On my birthday this year, I had turned 62. Him and his dear wife said, may we take you to Mastro's? And I said, yeah, I serve the master. I'll go to Mastro's. Thank you, Lord, you answered my prayer. I wanted a nice steak for my birthday. At the end of the nice dinner, which he paid for, which made it even nicer, 
He said, may I share something with you? And he reached his hand across the table. This just happened. He said, this morning I was up at 4.37. So was I. And that was the exact t- uh, time on the Comcast box by the TV. The TV was off, but it was 4.37. And he said, God began to put this on my heart. I began to cry like a baby. I mean, ugly crying. None of that cute, keep yourself together. And in my heart, I bowed and began to worship God because there's no way, not Becky, not anyone would have ever known what I was saying in a whisper except God himself. And in that moment when he said that, I knew that it wasn't just him praying, that the Holy Spirit was praying with the utterance, with groanings and standing in the gap for me. And can I say, my life began to change. And I believe our sabbatical to Italy for two months was a direct result, not only of this leader praying for us, but I know Jesus himself was praying for Jude and Becky, saying, God, there is no condemnation. God, I am at your right hand. God, I'm ever living, not just to heal, not just to preach, not just to do a miracle. God, I am praying for them. And this, this is not an exaggeration. We get home from Italy. I, I'm a freak. I'm like a middle school girl. I keep a journal. I have a diary. And it's filled with things that God shares and puts on my heart. And answers to those. Disappointments sometimes. And it's written, no one knows. Not even Becky would know what's in my journal. We get home. Andrea, you know what he says to me? Hey, on the 27th, God had me pray for you and Becky, these three things. What was happening? On the 26th, what happened? Well, that's when the train stopped for an hour and 47 minutes uh, right outside of Rome. And that's when literally I had a God visitation that broke through. I knew it had to be the Holy Spirit praying. I knew it had to be Christ praying. But somehow this man who lives in Ventura, California or Camarillo, California, shared something infinite and eternal with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he began to pray for two other people and our lives and our marriage are changed forever because that's the type of prayer that is infinite, that transcends and it can change the world I want California saved I want her born again I don't want us to be a church that judges her I want to be a church that stands in the gap for her and maybe God will change California like he did Jude and Becky because intercession is powerful, it works It's godly. Jesus himself prayed for others on the cross. Abraham prayed for a city and his nephew. Come on. David prayed. Moses prayed for Israel. Daniel prayed for others in captivity. I want my life to matter. How many soldiers that have lived through time? From Achilles to Alexander the Great. They are not recognized in heaven. How many famous singers will they be? Are they recognized in heaven? How many wealthy people are they recognized in heaven? Intercession makes our lives distinguished.